fire. Yes. Yes. We're live and we are live on Quiet. I am Diana and I'm here with Ashton. Hi. And we're going to co host uh, this podcast. Uh, and we titled it Wild because I'm going to have Ashton take it from here. Okay, well, wild to me is what I love doing. It's just an acronym that bounced around in my head for a while. And now here we are sharing what we love doing with people that love doing joyful things. I'm so excited. I started for you with the magazine. So you have, um, so you really drew me to you to even start this project was the magazine which is uh wild homes and gardens um so how did you really start it What's your inspiration what made it um a, a come to this level because my i mean our idea for this show really is to bring this magazine to life because i've never seen a magazine like it before it's so creative it is it's so inspiring. Um, I feel like it has everything that you need in life and none of the marketing commercial stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that's, I, I love art. I love reading. It's just, it's the, these are literally things I love doing. And over the last few years, I've really just somehow i mean just miraculously met these different women and these different avenues of all these things and i'm like this needs to be shared or you know and even if it's just with our little circle to me just to see people's faces when they have their art shared in this tangible people and when people when strangers are starting to buy these things so we i actually today was the first day i finally have both issues in a bookstore and an actual like I, like we're on Amazon, which is yeah. amazing in itself. But now you can actually shop local oh, wow. and, and wow. yes, and two sold today. Wow. What's the name? <laughs> yes, it is called Needful What's Things it? in downtown Palatka, Florida. Needful, Needful Things. things. And it's in Florida. And yes, it's in Florida. Palaka, Florida. <laughs> it's yes, because your yes. poetry it are sending the two poems are in these issues. Like it's just so yeah, cool, it right? Like, my heart. like oh, and then someone bought it to the that spread. Strangers. Not just our friends and our moms. Like these are strangers. <laughs> It's so cool. The strangers say, you know, oh, enjoy this. And it's like, oh, really? It's like, really? That's all uh, to me. I don't, I'm not, I just want to inspire others. And one person is all. And that's why, like, I keep, it keeps going and it keeps going as I meet these people. And it's just like, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Um, how, was it easy for you to make the connection? Easy for you to make the starting off. I wanna, I wanna also explain to you so, explain maybe to even introduce your magazine even and so on. This is the process. I'm always curious because I was always curious about like how do people start magazines. It was always the curiosity. <laughs> I'm sure I am not. I I feel like I'm not the norm. Maybe this. I don't know. I um. My background, I worked for, I was a journalist, I was a reporter, so I did like um, a tiny, tiny bit of copywriting, copy, and using different um, Adobe programs, so different programs, and so InDesign was a big one, and um, I was not as savvy as I am now, but my resume did say I was extremely <laughs> great in all of these different programs that now I actually have learned. And thankfully, like I've used YouTube and Skillshare to learn all the things, the format. And I mean, I'm still like, there's error. Like I'm still learning. I like, and I'm the I'm my own worst editor. Mm -hmm. oh, like, you know, like it's yeah, crazy. I'm a I'm such a, like, I read things, I proofread, I, like, 
I can edit in. I guess it's so ridiculous, but um. So, but the so my pro I. I just started it at, on InDesign. I didn't realize that you could literally put a magazine together in InDesign. I don't know what I thought like you needed besides that. It's pretty like as long as you, you fight with formatting and all of those things, I've just been learning. It. Like YouTube is my savior. All these tutorials and I've just been kind of doing that. And now I um, I don't know what to do now. I just know random people that have like I this bookstore now, like this one. It's, our, it's my favorite bookstore um, in my town, and so I just asked them, and they're like, "Yes." So, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what the like the real procedure is for people. You know, well, I know you're paving the way for whatever it is because now you're in the bookstore, the magazine, and they get to read my words, and that is very mind blowing and very exciting. And I'm really excited to just see this, uh, share this experience with our audience um, on Just TV. So anyone who is listening, thank you for tuning in, um, and. This is wild, and it airs on all major social media platforms, uh, and again, just TV and just um, And my name is Anna, and I'm here with my co-host, co Ashton. And we're so glad you guys are listening and tuning in, and we're just going to continue talking about our connection and really why we started uh, this podcast called wild and the magazine that really started our connection and made all of this happen um wild homes and garden so i said um why 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 did you uh name it wild homes and garden oh my gosh so i for years have been <laughs> I've been receiving better homes and gardens and I don't know who sent it to me. I didn't sign up. Like it has like different States. Now it has just followed me. And it's my name. Like it's truly my, me. I think it's my mom and she doesn't remember it, but it, I think it finally, I haven't been getting it. So it lapsed. Somebody didn't pay the, so I've, I've learned, from, <laughs> isn't it? I know interesting timing, but so I, and I loved better homes and gardens. I love the recipes, but I always was like, you know, this needs more, art like we need like you know some substantial art in it and so, something you know I just knew a tiny bit of because for women like I as, as a woman you know so I really have been wanting to start a magazine I can't wait to bring some of my fellow artists that are in this magazine that helped me kind of encourage me all helped me all the ways but literally we were walking around and shooting, I was shooting them, they were shooting me, playing with my camera, just some girls getting wild in the woods, and we, I was like, I'm going to start a magazine, like, soon, like, that's what I need to do, you know, like, I'm home now, I'm home with, you know, with my kid, like, I'm in a, a different kind of, and my, both girlfriends were like, yeah, do it, like, how could we help, and I'm like, y'all, y'all are my muses, you are, like, this is what is, this is where it's leading, and so, that was just, it kind of just went like that, did I even answer the question? What was the, oh, the name, the name. <laughs> you mentioned so many other things and. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> I love a few things you mentioned, but the first one is really because the positivity of a uh, woman to woman connection. And I feel like, uh, I, I, I don't know how it's happening now, but back in the day in the eighties and nineties, I feel like it was such a competitive thing happening between women. It was always hard to connect, or at least I experienced it. Such a really mm -hmm. um, but it's so beautiful now to see this woman connecting and creating these beautiful things. Because I feel like the more we connect, the more we can create and obviously provide opportunities. And I wish I knew all of that with wild homes and gardens. So, going back to yes and that's to inspire to inspire others like and we're not alone you know women like we it's we're so similar the way we we don't have time to create these things that we're not that are not part of our you know it's like we tell ourselves all these things and then 
we start doing a little bit and we're like, oh, I can squeeze that. And then we meet other women and we don't feel guilty about it as we're talking. You know, it's yeah. there's the mom guilt, the all the guilt. So having just that little tiny tidbit to me is was extremely helpful yes. and just getting more just get, inspiring, you know? Especially when you have little ones and you have a son. He's how old? Four. Four, yes. Yeah, so He's that's four. Right? I remember four. It's of. something. Well, my daughter's not. Um, oh, she's not. I couldn't remember. Nine, yeah. That's an interesting number. What grade is she in? What is her grade? What oh, grade is she grade. in? Third grade. Okay, third grade. I remember myself more in like grades, not age. Does that make sense? Oh, like when I think back, I like think back, like, you know, like I remember third grade. Especially like, when I started that's a whole... remembering like seventh grade, eighth grade. I get confused with age. Also, I skip the grade and it really gets confusing with age because apparently I graduated high school. I wasn't even 18 yet. I was just 17. And oh, that's crazy, right? And that took me a while to grasp and understand. And I was like, oh, I wish I never slept the grade because uh, I think that also had a lot of drawbacks. Just being a grade and pushing myself to continuously excel when I could have had it a lot easier if I was in my grade because I skipped the grade and I get it. To a private school. <laughs> But at least you're with older kids. I see benefits in younger with the older. I mean, yeah. but like, I guess there's pros and cons. But do you know what I mean? Like, to me, skipping a grade, like, yeah, you're pushing yourself. Oh, but that's yeah. super flattering, too. Uh, like, that's super cool. But, yeah, then you had older. Did you have older boyfriends? Like, yeah, were your boyfriends that's older then? No problem. Older everything. Yeah. <laughs> older everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. By the time I was 16, I had boys six years older than me. So I always a lot older. And I come to think of it, some of it was probably illegal, but not on my part. <laughs> not on my part. <laughs> uh, no, I, exactly. And I never lied about my age. You know, I grew up in Florida on the East Coast. Tourists were always around. It's just funny you just said that because I, th I was thinking about this recently. Like, I, I never lied about my age, but I don't remember ever really telling it. And I may have looked a little older. You know what I mean? Like I just like so I there's it could there could have been some issues, no, especially nowadays. Now I never lied about it, but I never told it fully either. And then you know when they and you say you're a senior, well, you don't really have to specify if it's high school or college. <laughs> Exactly. That's what I exactly. I'm a freshman. Like, of course, that means I'm a freshman in college. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. I'm happy you grew up similar. Yes, that's. I would say very I, similar. Go. I think that was also the draw. I didn't even realize that when you approached me about uh, my writing and you said you loved my poetry. Of course, that made me go, oh, my mind is exploding. Like, oh, my mind is exploding with that. Someone likes their work. And uh, well, I've been following you longer. I have this like, connection at all. But, and then we just, uh, we did the first, our first interview on Borderline, and it was not it was crazy, but the connection was just so real that I was just so real to bring, uh, into it. and we need to have a show where we discuss it, and we talk to people who created it, and we grow and grow and connect with other women, and continue to inspire, and, uh, grow even more and hopefully imagine if we inspired everybody to be connected and women helping each other rather than really competing because the competition really i think that 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 really kills the person's spirit or soul it really did for me it really did yes. for me yes oh i don't i can't all in all avenues like i even when i was like like that middle school age girl yeah. The whole thing, right. like, it just is so, uh, yeah, it's it not helpful in any regards. 
No. But I've always, like people like as a photographer, people have been, I always share my locations, you know, and I love to travel and I like to go to places and find other places and I'm always telling other people and I've had other photographers ask like, don't you think, you know, you're, they're you're going to, you know, take away your spot or whatever. And I'm like, what? That is so crazy. Like there are plenty of spots. Like we, have, you know what I mean? Like this is not what we're here for. Like I will always share these beautiful things. Like I can't help but share these beautiful places with whoever wants. Like I'm so happy when people are wanting to, to see it or interested. And I feel, you know, I feel the same way, especially when I, I like sharing it. I, it wasn't even, do I, cross do I hide my words? It was, like, it was, if you like it, and I'm happy to share it. And if you continue to like it, I'll continue to share it. And if anything comes out of uh -huh. it, well, that's the end game, right? And I guess I am old fashioned uh -huh. when it comes to publishing because uh, as an author, I like to, I like a big publishing company, you know? I want Penguin Press to come to me and be like, we love you. <laughs> right? That's almost like and they went, winning it yeah. out there or something. That's just like, yeah. So I am old fashioned in that way. And I feel like just to reach out to them, I always feel like, well, I need to my point out there because you got to know what my audience is like. Do they like it? And I was just so amazed that there was so much um, that I probably would have never felt or even understood if I never shared my poetry and just, uh, started submitting it without sharing it, without um, building a community and without really connecting with it and receiving all the feedback. I get it. That's why I love to give social media, and I put social media, that's like the umbrella of so many different things, but you know, there's a ton of different ones besides Facebook and Instagram. I'm oh, thankful yeah. for that because I, there's so much back there. That's, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's all the things. It's nice, you know, like, like it's coming from strangers. Like they don't care. Like they're not trying to like pop you up. Like it's just so cool. Well, even with us just you having, should right, having this awesome conversation and I know there's an audience and I know there's people listening because we are on Just TV and there's usually a few people watching. So it's such a wonderful thing to just be able to share our story and share our with um, so many viewers. And what I'm hoping is that some fellow artist that has not started sharing yet, has not put anything out there, nobody even knows that they're writing or that they're painting or any of those things, hope they hear us. And they're like, oh, duh, what have I been doing? Like, that's what I want to inspire, you know? Like, we, and send it to us, because of course we want to see and we want to share, but it just feels so good to have a place to send out what you're creating. Because We're in touch with you. You know, I know I was always so scared to share my work because I always was so scared that I was going to be dead. And it's, it's always so hard to share those little pieces because you're like, oh, everyone hates it. But at the same time, it's such a wonderful step forward because you are going to start receiving that feedback that you need or you're going to start making connections that you need with other authors and writers and artists and everyone else who's in the their words are going to inspire more art mm -hmm, exactly it's so beautiful so for anyone that's actually listening yes connect um, connect with us um i'm diana caprina on facebook it's easy to find me and ashton you are easy to find too right yeah i'm ashton and ryan and um, but Wild Homes and Gardens, whichever one sticks, I don't know, but I feel like I'm like, oh, it's just easy. But Diana Caprina does that, you like rolls off the tongue. Ashton Lauren Ryan, <laughs> definitely find us and share. Even just to keep like, to me, I love my little group text that I have with my girlfriends, you know, in different groups. To me, that is every little thing, you know what I mean? Like just to share it in that little group, just like, okay, yeah. off my chest and you know, 
that's a beautiful yeah, thing. I always encourage um, my Facebook group. So I have a few of them. I started. So there's Let's Connect, Create, Connect, Amplify, Writers, and Artists United. And I even have a neurodivergent group after I found out I am neurodivergent. So it, it's my fun. It's my stress relief. I share and I connect. And then I realize, wow, I'm really connected to people I want to connect who are on the same wavelengths or even above yep. and it's really inspiring yes. It's really yes well you're never that's exactly how i feel like i always want to be around like the people who are do, like doing more like that's you know i'm constantly inspired by seeing these people just it's amazing it really is it really is mm -hmm. So the magazine, I know you have copies, so um, I can just show show them because they do look really, really nice, okay. and it's a lot of pages, and it's wonderful. It's almost like a book. And she went, yes, and um, where I'm getting them printed, they have a nice cover. This is issue two. I love that. So let's see. I'm going to show yours because your poetry. Here -ish. Crisp pages. I know. This one hasn't even been open. So I know you're right around here. So tell me how oh. you can see that. So I love it. I love it. And I know you there's two in here, but this is what draws me. And I love your words. Uh, oh. I love your words. Tell us again where because and I don't are you do you share where do you share your Poetry. Um, like, where did I find page? Was it or all of them? I think it's, it was the f Facebook. I shared on Facebook. I shared on Facebook. Um, Which Facebook page, though? I know you have a Facebook page. I feel like there's one, or is it you made one, yeah, Diana yeah. Caprina? You do. Yeah. Is it oh, okay? Because that's I've been following you for really? a while, I and. Yes, and I don't like, you know, who knows how it came up, but oh yeah, I just, it's your name, I remember your name, and I like, every time I would see you post, and I was in at least one of your, and now I think I'm in all of them, at least almost all of them, um, I was in one of your Facebook groups, so I remember seeing your name, and then maybe, maybe I went to your profile, I don't know, I've been following you, like, I was like oh, your fangirl really for a while. Really yes, really yes, I thought, way before I started the magazine because I remember going through like in my own head thinking about where I would find poetry or you know other women poetry you know and I'm like okay Facebook and I remember your stuff was in my like you were in there inspiring I don't like I don't think I've told you yeah, yeah. Really yes. my groups for that. So the initial idea is that I'm always in my kids are if you go in my groups and scroll and it's all inspiration stuff. The uh, about connection and some humor uh, poetry and I again I only pulled it from other poets before I even started sharing mine. But that was the idea and I think what I love about the magazine is almost like all my Facebook groups almost come to life. Except I don't have a recipe one. We might have to bring that to life as well. If there's enough people sharing recipes, then we can share recipes around the world too. So that was it. That's what I love. Oh, uh, that's what I love. I love to have every little bit, especially like we, I eat like relatively healthy, holistic, you know, and to get healthy recipe, like these old traditional recipes bringing all those back, that's so cool to me. And this magazine has already, I've already connected with these women that are like, let me tell you about what we used to give our children and you know, in England and, or like our, our ancestors, you know? And I'm like, yes, and they, you, I, you know, some of the words, like the herbs and stuff, are, they still exist, they have a little different name or, you know, different little deviation, but that to me is cool. But I, I love to cook and eat. Like that's why I could never leave food out. Yeah. Of a woman, that's why I that you know, like I love to read, I love to eat, like I'm a well well rounded woman. <laughs> love art and gardening. Oh, I love gardening. And gardening. Yes, 
And it's finally, are you guys, is it it's getting it's warmer been, there? It's been nice the past couple of days. The Boston Marathon, it was so warm for us. That was a little crazy. We actually went. I've never gone out during the Boston Marathon in, uh, before. But this was the first time we went, and it was just so crazy. I mean, there was just human traffic. You just, we just, we, usually what took, uh, what is a mile uh, from A to B was turned out into seven miles because they literally had so many streets just closed off. Uh, I think because the security is so much more tight now since after the Boston bombing, uh, the marathon bombing, that is just, uh, yeah, it was a little bit more. My daughter said uh, she, she's done with that. She had an experience. She doesn't understand why she needs to go and watch people run. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, it would be cool to be in it, like as a runner. Not that I'm a marathon runner, but you know what I mean? Like, but I don't think I, if my spouse was in it, I'd be like, well, we'll watch from TV. Like, could you wear a GoPro or something? <laughs> like, like, no, I don't think we, for, only for a minute to see. That's why, like, I kind of feel bad sometimes for like these track and field kids. I'm like, they, <laughs> these moms are dedicated. Oh, off the, this really off the. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, running is just yeah. not. I think it's short not, distance, not long distance. Like I can't, I can't do long distance. It's I as long as I don't am like like I'm competitive. And so I'll like try to race and then I hurt my, you know, I'm like not, shouldn't be doing it. Like all of those things. I, I like to run. Like running is one of the things that like, I'm, I don't like to go to the gym. Like I'm not a gym person. I like to do like a little yoga, but running, I like, it like makes my heart. I can feel like, I feel like it's like a reset. I'm like, okay, yes. here I am. Yeah. Ran that I off. I have a lot of energy. energy. Yeah, I get the same yeah. fix. <laughs> also now since the weeds are out, right? It's, it's a lot nicer in the weeds in the garden. In the backyard, I I went there and I just worked. I had a crazy workout, just I, the, with the the weeder and just pulling and just pulling everything out and just pulling it. my arms. Like, <laughs> uh huh. But it's so therapeutic. Oh, I'm you're like, sore. I uh huh. Like, no. I just. Like, no. Because it I does a lot. Like, you work muscle. I cannot like, exercise in the gym. I, I cannot be in the room running. Like, I need to be outside, and it needs to feel good being outside. It grosses me out, but I always, like, I was an athlete, and so I was in gyms a lot. I was on the swim teams and stuff, so I was, like, in that. So I don't know if that all did it. And I I have all good experiences, but every time I walk into a gym, I, like, smell everybody's sweat. It's such a funny thing to be, like, and I'm not, like... I go to festivals and hug every sweaty person, and I'm the sweatiest person. Like, yes, yes. it's such a weird thing to be like. like that's fine, but something so, about the gym, and I was an athlete too. I played lacrosse. Um, and that oh. was, yeah. My daughter plays now. It's that's, exciting. It, it, it softens my heart when I watch her. Now I can train her, and she actually lets listen. Yeah. To her. And I pulled out my old. Oh, that's <laughs> And then I googled that. That's and cool. My old wooden lacrosse stick is actually vintage now. Is it a something? Really? Yes. Could you sell it on eBay? Oh, I know. Is it like something? <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be displayed somewhere. I know. I, I still use it when I am. Um, I still use it. Yeah. I still, I still use it. Next time I'll bring it. I'll show it on camera because I know in Canada, like the um, is I think there is a sport, like a, a national sport. I know it's it's pretty big in Canada. I know it's it's and well, it's getting big here too. Yeah. I feel like it's a hardcore sport. Like it's crazy. I feel like I have some girlfriends that like um. I think there is starting to take over here too. Yeah, it is in high school too, but college. Like I remember the girl. Like it was serious. Yeah, like, that's cool. I love that. Yeah, and I played. I played in high school. And I did it all. School and I did it all. My sport and so you would before life really happened and the things fell apart. So it was definitely like love and just being my daughter. 
pick it up. I didn't even post it. I didn't even say it. It came to me one day and was like, I want to play lacrosse. Let's do uh. And she got into it. And, and you don't want to let me do it too much. <laughs> oh. I love that. I like to see, and especially girls, because I used to know how I was with my mom. Like, anything my mom did, you know, the whole thing. And it's like, you probably didn't want to, like, even show that you were super happy about her doing it. Oh, yeah, she's doing that. Too. I love that. She's doing that. Too. That's so fun, though. That's so fun. It is fun. And it's fun to see her unique personality come out more and shine more. Because four is fun. But four is like, they're still just learning how to express themselves. They don't have all the words yet. And then when they get older and they just, think, it's like, you're not even a kid. It's like, you're, it's, it's, it's really weird. I will say it's weird because sometimes I look at her and she's like, my little baby. Sometimes I look at her and she's like, huh? because now she's almost my height, which is, oh my gosh, tall. Oh, wow. Well, so does she look like, like, do you feel like you're looking at yourself when you look at her? Uh, depends. From different angles. She's like a combination. Of She's her. like a combination. Me and my better half. She's like a, a mix of the two. And I think she got all, all our good parts together. Oh, I love that. Of course, of course. That's sometimes when my son does little things, and I'm like, and all negative, like negative things, and I'm like, oh, it's me, it's me, and I like physically, like, a uh, little reminder, little mirror reminder, never hurt. That's oh, for sure. There, there, there are many of those. How fun! How fun! That's speaking of. It's, I'm so happy that we're talking about these kids and stuff. I am. I would love something that I don't feel like I cover enough and it just hasn't happened as parenting, not parenting, but mom, motherhood, like birth. Like I would love for someone to connect with us and share some stories about mm -hmm. something in the realm to inspire maybe new moms, moms, well, all parenting or variations of parenting we all have I think, sure we follow similar styles in the long run but i think we all have little parts that works as cool moms or whatever a unique ways of even interpositive parenting that some of us might miss so it would be such a great way to just connect with just other moms, older, younger, and just really getting together and hear everyone's opinions. Yes, I would love to draw some of that in. Any of it. That's that would be, yeah, something that I feel like. Be and just generally. Yeah. Everything is so linked together. It's all one big circle. Our ancestors. Our ancestors. It's all one big circle and it's a cycle. And I think to heal sometimes you need to break certain patterns and certain cycles and it does go back into generations. So it's so important to me how previous parenting was. The society changes, it changes. It's, 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 it's harsh parenting. Now we're in, you know, positive parenting and giving choices. I like this one much better than the main parenting one. I've it seems easier, doesn't it? Like, I, of course, like, I have, you know, I raise my voice, like, all those things, but it seems like the gentle, like, like, my throat would hurt a lot if I was harsh parenting. A lot more, I should say. Like, you know what I mean? It seems easier. Like, practicing patience, it's hard. Like, it's work, you know, to, but it it's just, it's so easy to me. Our, I've had some good conversations with older and they're like I, you know there's nothing wrong with this like you guys are doing it right just a little breathing like even my son knows like oh let's take a moment <laughs> like it's I'm simple gonna, yeah, but I'm you know you need a break i'm just sometimes i just leave, walk away from the room if i'm too frustrated but it gets like, I, like 
They used to seem harder. What I've learned is they seem really like, harder when the child is growing. But once they're even nine right now, it's just, it's it's so much easier. It's like it's so easier. having a conversation. It's like, well, did you want to do this or did you want to do that? And it's just like, oh, I want to do this. Okay, perfect. And it just goes with the flow. And there's communicating. no feedback and there's no arguing and there's no foreplay. And same thing with how she dresses, right? When she has the preferences, what she wants, but it's not for me, it's her own style, whatever she wants, it's her own style, whatever it is, it's her choice. And as long as it's not crazy overpriced, <laughs> you know, then it's okay. It's, I can only imagine. And I remember when I was but you know, growing up. It was different, right? Like I wore what I was told to wear. I was exactly what I was going to say. That's the difference I have found in my parenting style and with my parents is the choice, giving my kid the choice, even at a, as a four-year-old to be, for me, I have a hard time making decisions. And I'm like, you know, it's because I didn't really have to make any until all of a sudden I did. So maybe I would like to try to like, Give some choices to practice. I've learned that's a tiny little, and I'm not hating. I might like bless them, but you know what I mean. Like, I, and I think that was the, the, that's our generation. Do it, but you know, that's the choice. You said it perfectly. Let like, like, you're, and you're seeing the benefits and of it. it. And like, it's been the practice, and it started hard because again, when the child doesn't understand, and it's hard to communicate. Obviously, giving choices can be tricky and. But I always, I believe the way my parenting turned into like intuitive because I know the harsh parenting. My parents were very authoritarian. I mean, came from the Soviet Union, you know, very different, very different than even here. But even here, I believe it, it was quite similar. Parents were really straight, like, really this way. There was no other alternative. Nobody was no, like, no, like, there's no. And I was one of those who was always curious. So I always, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take your no, but I need to understand the why behind you. And so now, yes, I was the same. And that got me in trouble because it was my curiosity that got me in trouble. In more trouble than I ever probably would even imagine. And it was just because I was that. <laughs> what do you mean, no? I'll find out why then. Exactly. And I'll make that decision myself. Uh huh. I was the same. I have to learn on my own. And that's why I love, I talk to everybody and I love, you know, like I used to travel alone all the time. And so I feel like I would sit at airport bars and people talk about anything, you know, cause you're never going to see anything. And, and I always just thought it was so interesting that like, I don't know, we're humans. Like we, if we just had a tiny, I don't know, I lost my train of thought completely in fact there, but the choice, <laughs> but going back to the choice, it just. I don't know. I try to can like just let my kid like make his own decisions so I can feel like I, you know, I don't know. Give them some choices. Just stick with it. I would say. <laughs> I see it working now. The choices. But it's also so I lost my chance. Travel in a lot of places. Where have you been? I haven't. I've never left the U.S. I haven't been anywhere else. Oh. Um, oh, well, yeah, well, I've traveled all over the United States and I've traveled, um, I've been to Italy, Paris, um, just little places. Nowhere all that cool. You know, uh, Guatemala, like Mexico. I mean, I shouldn't say not that cool. I've traveled more in the United States, yeah. though, you know, yeah. but I, I mean, some people, like Italy was amazing. I flew out, um, flew out to Paris. I was in Europe for two weeks and bebopped between a few places in Paris and bebopped a few places in Italy. And it was amazing. Okay. I love to, I, I love to try, even in my own state, I love to just go oh, a different yeah. route, you know, yeah. see, I always love to see. I, I love to That's travel, so. and, you know, in the States. Okay. I can't really leave the U.S. 
a weird type of immigrant. It's, well, that's what I was going to say. So you, yeah, so I thought you were born, in, where were you born? You were born here. That's what I thought. Okay, so, you, so then when did you move uh, here? Okay. So you're little. Yeah, that's why I don't even have the accent. Um, I saw, really, I read your story about your immigration yeah. story. So you'll have to tell me more. Tell, tell. We'll do it for the next one. Will, this one we only have five minutes. So we can. Oh, well, I'm dying to know about that. That's why I was like, I'm sorry. Well, I will share. You can ask me anything about immigration. And I'll be happy to share. I'm actually, um, actually, um, being interviewed by documentary about me about being stateless. And like going back to the poem that I, I wrote it, the cage bird was uh, is the feeling of being stateless because I don't have paperwork. So I can't travel. At this point I can't even uh, travel state to state on the airplane because I, I couldn't get my um ID. And that's a whole nother thing. Oh, girl. But yes, that is another good place. Proper paperwork. And now I'm just waiting. Hopefully, my work authorization card comes in. And they give me permission to work in the U.S. again. Work in the U.S. And I can take that and get my. I guess at this point, I'm just going to go for it and get a real ID. <laughs> Bless you. I didn't realize you couldn't fly in between yeah, the states yeah, either. I can't fly right yeah. now. Right. I, I don't even, I don't know. Did, have you ever seen that movie with Tom Hanks? Um, he, he ends up being stateless. He's stuck in the airport because he came from a country. And while he was traveling, that country fell apart. So very like the former like the Soviet Union. So that's what happened to me. The country fell apart. I never left the US. So I have no other country to claim. And I'm not even hundred I'm not part of the Russian Federation. I was born in Georgia and I lived in Armenia. And they are completely different countries now. So Oh, that's interesting. So when I They're gonna laugh there's gonna so be something like, about you in history books. Oh, I wonder. Like this type of situation. You know, I, right? to spread the word about Satan. Oh, my heart for you. But it's in the works, right? It's, it's looking good. Works. It's, a, uh, you know, lucky me. I, I, I went through, for those that know immigration in the U.S., they finally just figured it out. And that's the next step in the right direction. To go okay. Oh. The next step is interview. Um, yeah, but we can totally do a, a while the full um, immigration topic discussion. I'll answer any question you any questions you have. I'll be happy to. <laughs> I'm so interested. I can't wait. And, uh, uh, we, we only we have only three minutes, three minutes here on TV. Uh, I really it's appreciate everyone who's tuned in. And uh, to conclude, again, I just want to show a beautiful magazine. I flip a few pages. All right, I'll take a look at the quick is read. Issue. This is about different herbs. Some of my favorite herbalists. Oh, we have to. So I love to read. So I like to include books that I, that I love, authors I love. And so this last issue, the author was Elizabeth Blackwood, an awesome book that's on Amazon, caller number five. And then I also got to know Charlie from Blood Letters and Bad Men. Another, it's a, this is a band. And... Her and her significant other in her band. Oh, and her music is awesome. She's in a band with her. I can't, I, they, are they married? I can't remember if they're married or if they're significant, but they're awesome. It would be awesome. so cool to bring those people who are in the magazine on air yeah. and have them yeah. on our show on wild. That um, would be awesome. But I would love. I would love that. So... 
Anyone who's listening, please stay tuned. We have so much more to come. We'll actually have more people who are going to be joining us and really discuss this magazine and what makes it unique and really what inspires us and what inspires everyone else. Or we hope we inspire everyone else. If you have any closing remarks, I'm giving you the mic on this one. I think we have like one minute to go. <laughs> oh, I'm just thankful. I'm so, so thankful to connect with you. And I cannot wait to share all these wild women that we get to know and meet along the way. And I hope if anybody is listening, watching, and feels inspired, send your art, your recipes, your parenting <laughs> stories, yes, anything, yes, anything has yes. been repeated. But easy to connect. That's really what I need. Yes. Connect with us. I look forward to it. Too. And the <laughs> next time on Wild, um, airing on Just TV and all major social media platforms, including Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, and of course the radio. So just FM. Thank you so much for listening us to us today. And we can't wait to be back here talking um, about wild.